Hello, my name is Kyle, I think. And no, I have not seen Batman yet, so we'll, we'll talk about that later. I'm going to read to you from a book. In the 19th century, there were no televisions, airplanes, computers, or spacecraft, nor were there antibiotics, credit cards, microwave ovens, compact discs, or mobile phones. There was, however, an internet? There's no question mark there, but I put it for effect. Attitudes toward everything from news gathering to diplomacy had to be completely rethought. Meanwhile, out on the wires, a technological subculture with its own customs and vocabulary was establishing itself. Does this all sound familiar? That one does actually have a question mark after it. This is a book that I found online called The Victorian Internet. It was from an old library that they sent it to me. It's by Tom Standage. So why am I reading this book? Well, I, I am actually thinking about doing a, a series of videos, whether it's over a couple weeks or, or a month, all about Victorian literature and the times and why I think that it has greatly influenced modern life. It's really super fascinating to me because this really is where horror fiction started, where children's literature started, where the novel began. There's a whole lot of stuff that began in the Victorian Era. That sounds so boring. Shut up, you. Anyways, the larger point that I have found by reading this book is that technology is constantly evolving. It is probably true that the telegraph that started in the 1800s eventually evolved into the internet of the 1900s. We as a society are constantly improving or improving things. And really, you're going to fall into two groups about this kind of stuff. You're either going to be the people who embrace that change or the people who fight that change. And sometimes there's really no right or wrong answer to that. I mean, I have read books on electronic devices. Device, although I do prefer this kind of thing in my hand. I like the tactile nature of it. I like to flip the pages I like the I like to smell that old musty smell. This is a very good smelling book. It's from an old library, so you can almost you know get that that history through your nostrils and and into your soul if you believe in such things, which meh, I'm out on the fence on that one currently. Business seems to be the biggest one that wants to thwart change. And I just realized that this is now the second video in a row where I'm trying to like beat up on big business. I'm really not that much of a, I don't know what that was. Let's take for instance, this movie, Never Too Young to Die, which I have on VHS. Yes, why do I have it on VHS? Because, well, I have a VHS player still. Shut up! Home video is an interesting history lesson because when video started coming out, these studios hated it. They tried to shut it down, they tried to prevent people from getting them, they didn't want this to happen. Until they discovered they could make a lot of money off of it. And then, what it turned out to be is now movie studios get the majority of their money from videos. Not on cassettes so much anymore, but DVDs and Blu-rays. And you can see that nowadays where there's just that pushback to online video transfers. Netflix is a great resource, but there's some studios that do not let their movies be on there. I would just love it if there's just one resource where just do everything on there where I could find any old television episode that I wanted. I could find any old movie that I wanted to watch or any new release that had come out. It just seems that whenever there's new technology, there's so much pushback because the people don't understand what the people want and how the people want to get it. And honestly, I just want them to implant it into my brain so I can have access to it all the time. Which brings up another great point, which is as technology expands, how is the human seen in all of this? I can foresee at some point there may be being the ability for us to live forever. I'm not talking so much about our corporeal bodies here. I'm talking more of our minds. I think that our bodies are always going to waste away and eventually be no more. Our consciousness may be eventually be able to be downloaded perhaps online somewhere into a computer in some sort of machine. Is that still us? What makes us human? What makes us us? Those are really large questions that I don't think I'm going to now be answering to this video. This video suddenly took a dark tone that I wasn't actually anticipating as I started making it. But again, not working the script, so I'm kind of just doing flow of consciousness and stuff here. And what have I been? I've been recording for 10 minutes straight here, and most of that's not going to show up. I went on a really racist tirade, so we're just going to pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> Ugh. What are your thoughts on all this? What about technology? Do you embrace change? Do you don't like it when things, you know, upgrade? Is that the right word? Am I using that correctly? What about the Telegraph? What about Victorians? Tell me all the things that you're thinking about down in the comments below. Watch maybe my last video if you so choose. Watch my next video depending on when you're watching this. And um, as I become a shill here on the internet. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you whenever that next time is. Did you find that interesting? Was it... Did, it, did I... Was I too didactic? <sighs> I probably shouldn't use big words, should I? I'm sorry. Anyways, 